All right, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. I want to welcome you guys to our Saturday meeting of the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, I'm happy everyone got here to be with us today. We've got a great presenter coming up for us, which we'll announce in just a minute. Uh, we've already got 120 people on the meeting, which is a great thing to have and awesome to be out here on Saturday. Hope everybody stayed safe with all the storms that have been going on uh, the last 24 hours or so. I know we still have a lot of wind happening here in Kentucky, um, so but I hope everybody's been safe. Um, starting off today, i uh, let you guys know I'm not Blake Lunsford. If you didn't know that, well, you know now. Um, Blake is not with us today, but he sends his regrets of not being able to be here. He's uh, actually with his daughter on a college visit, hanging out with her, uh, which is a good thing. But he'll be back with us next week, and he uh, really wishes he could be with us today. And as we get started, I'd like to thank uh, Wood Carving Academy, uh, Helvey, Chipping Away, and Stubai for all the support, the direct support that they give us. Uh, we'd also like to give a big thank you to all of you who support the International Association of Wood Carvers through buying me a coffee link or buying merchandise from us. Uh, all these things help us keep the Zoom calls going throughout the year. Uh, there are a few upcoming workshops that we're going to talk about, everybody know about. And that first, um, First, we've got Janet Cordell is going to have a uh, work cl a class starting, and it's the Carving the Old Faithful Horse, which begins on April 24th. Dave Stetson is going to have his Waving Walker, uh, and that starts on April 22nd. Dale Green is going to have a Wood Carving Caricature Dogs that starts on May 20th. I also saw on Dale's uh, page earlier some uh, rough outs. I think he's going to have available out in Utah uh, for some new rough outs and things that were there. If you didn't see that off his Facebook, you can go back and check that out. Uh, there are also some ongoing classes like Dave, uh, Dwayne Gosnell's Willing Wednesdays. Uh, yeah. You can you can become a part of that and look at that. If you go to Dwayne's uh, website, uh, you'll be able to um, see those Whittling Wednesdays and be able to become a part of those classes. Also, uh, Chris Hammock has some is teaching some barfly classes. So you can check them out with chrishammock.com and see when those classes are and you'll be able to uh, take part in those. Um, and there's always a lot of people that are offering different types of classes, either through Zoom. Um, there's a lot of in-person classes going on right now as well uh, that are found in various places. But if you guys want us to announce those out, uh, please uh, message Blake or myself and uh, we'll make sure we get those out so people know what's going on. Um, we also want to talk about the CCA Carving the Rockies, which is September 23rd and 24th. You need to go ahead and get a hotel if you're planning on going, um, get your reservation set through and be ready for that event. Promises to be just as fun as last year, if not more fun. I'll use the word funner. No, my mom wouldn't be happy. She wouldn't like the grammar on that. Uh, at the end of our presentation today, I'm going to let you guys know who the upcoming presenters are going to be uh, up until the end of April. Uh, we have all those filled and uh, Blake and I are working on getting through May filled up and then we'll take a break for the summer and have a couple special Saturdays, but we're not going to do it all through the summer, uh, just so you guys know that. I'll also let you guys know about the next signature knife uh, that we'll be auctioning off uh, from Helvey. Uh, that's going to be coming up too. Um, also, in the chat, somebody shared a link uh, to the show that Bob Hershey and they were doing up at Lancaster's. Um, so if you guys want to see that, look in the chat for that. Dave is also going to give uh, some instructions for some things and I'm going to share, let him share that in just a little bit uh, but those are going to be surprises for um, in the chat that you guys can do through with that. Today uh, we get to host one of the best supporters uh, at least in my opinion uh, Dave Stetson. Uh, Dave always seems to come through for us whenever we need him. Uh, he wants to support the carving community as much as possible through sharing his gift and talents. And he's not only uh, he not only teaches on Wood Carving Academy um, he teaches uh, just on a regular basis. He's done stuff through Facebook and he's always out making sure that everyone knows um, about the carving community and he shares his talents and gifts freely, um, which is nice. Uh, if you've not had a chance to take a class with Dave, I've taken several of them and I've gained so much knowledge through all those classes I've taken with him. Uh, my carving has just gotten so much better because of those classes and learning what Dave has to teach. So you can be a part of that by going to Wood Carving Academy and looking. He has a class coming up, as I said. Um, it's all great. Um, it's been a privilege to get to know Dave over the last three years, and I'm happy to call him a friend. So if any of you need a great class, as I said, uh, he will he will help you out, and you can go to take one of his classes. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn this over to my buddy Dave, 
and I'm going to let him get started and he'll make some announcements uh, with what he's doing. And he's got a great class plan for us today. So Dave, it's all you brother. All right. Uh, we're going to do a little demo for you today. And uh, whether we get done or not is questionable. I've worked on a couple of these to see how long it would take me to do. And it was too long. So I, I made some changes. If anybody got a pattern that I had sent out, that's this guy here. Um, let's see. Anyway, um, there's a pattern here. Can you see what? I'm, yeah, okay. So I got a pattern here. And if you follow that pattern, I'm not gonna be carving that pattern. Uh, I changed it a little bit. It took me too long to get around the legs and, and separate them with the base on the figure. Um, my wife likes the shorter squatty guy because he she thinks he's cuter. But what I did was I took the rough out and I split it up between the legs. And I took the, I made the feet in, into the base. So the, his legs are longer. So I've got two versions of the same guy. The short guy is holding up the carve in the Rockies for the CCA sign, September 23rd and 24th. If you can get up there, um, I'll be giving a couple of these away up there at, uh, at that event. I'm also going to give away this guy when I get done today. Um, so if, if you want him, the way we're going to select who gets him is going to be based on uh why you think you deserve to get him over everybody else that's on here today <laughs> so this is the international association of wood carvers but we also support the wood carving academy so he's got a double sign here to hold up but this will be going to one of you guys you just have to go on chat and let me know why you think you deserve it over everybody else and if you've got a better response than the rest of them. Um, we'll let you know, and you can hang on at the end of the demo, and we'll get an address to send it to you. All right, get him out of the way. This is my next class coming up. And if you're interested in that, send an email to me, and I'll give you all the information you need. Um, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. So let's get on to this guy and see how far we can get with him. Um, I'm going to get started on this one, and then I'm going to switch over to this one because it's already got roughed out. So I'm going to try to save a little bit of time there. But basically, when I cut it out, I usually just do a profile, and then I carve everything from there. But in, in order to try to speed things up today, um, I took it back to the bandsaw. I split up between the legs, made his legs a little bit longer. And then I've laid out where the arms are going to be. And I've got one leg forward, one leg back a little bit. So I've just got a uh, probably a half inch wide number nine gouge. And I'm going to use that for most of my rough outs. So I'm getting off the jaw. I couldn't take his jaw off because it would take off his uh, shoulder as well when I'm on the bandsaw. We're just going to drive this in and see how long it takes to do this. And if you have any questions while I'm going through this, you just have to unmute yourself and speak up. See, this isn't very exciting watching this kind of operation go on. Are you going to have him post your new uh, drawing there? Uh, this one here? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so basically what he did is go in with a bandsaw and, and remove the sides of his head. And uh, the, the rough out itself, I put a center line down it. Right down the middle. That's why they call it a center line. Uh, then I took each half and split it in half. So everything on the outside is arm wood. Everything on the inside is torso. And 
the legs will just kind of splay off from there. Um, I've got one foot forward, um, lay out his feet on the bottom here. I'll splay his toes out a little bit. So there's a center line through the foot. There's a center line through the other foot. So his feet are kind of splayed out. When I lay out the foot, I divide the center line in thirds. Front th uh, back third here is his heel. Got a pen that is not cooperating. Let's see if we got another one that'll work. There, that's better. So there's his heel. His toe is going to be up here. Nice wide arch arc from toe to heel. Same thing starts out this way. And then we switch and do a little instep curve here. So that's where his feet are going to be. That lets me know what wood I need to take off there. So as I'm coming down, pulling off some of the excess on this side, Get this out of the way. Then I can push this leg back. Do you usually use a number nine like that when you're roughing out like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, it just cuts the wood easier um, and gets a lot of that bulk out of the way. Uh, it leaves me with a pretty non-definitive line where the gouge cuts so I, I can change my mind and move things around a little bit as I'm going. Um, this was... This was a, an idea from a night project that I did at Doan College, I don't know, many years ago. Okay, the hand is holding the card. I've gone up in there with a bandsaw and, and split it a little bit. I don't want it off to either side. I want it off to the side, but I don't want it. So I don't want it sitting right smack in the middle. So this is gonna be the hand That's the wood I'm going to leave with everything else that's coming off here. And I took off too much, which is why I'm going to switch over and do this one now. I figured I was going to screw it up. So I want to taper from the elbow to the shoulder. I want to ta taper that in a little bit. Gives them a more natural look. So both shoulders are going to taper in and then the elbows are going to be splayed out and then the elbows coming in to where his hand goes in his pocket. And on this outside from the elbow to the hand, I'm going to taper that in a little bit. So if you get in a hurry, the hand is what's going to suffer because it's sitting out here cross grain to everything else. So Dave, I do have a question that where, where you busted his hand off, do you, you would glue that back on normally? I can glue that back on, yeah. That's why I set it over here with the blank. That whole thing right there. Right. As it is. What, what kind of glue would that you'd use on that that would, not mess up the painting stuff later. Um, this is Gorilla Glue. Okay. But it's not just Gorilla Glue. I mean, that's that's the bottle. Uh, I had about a half a bottle of Will Elmer's Will Hold, I think it is. And what happens is these these caps, they get 
gunked up and I broke a cap trying to get it open on the other bottle. So I dumped the rest of the will hold in here with a Gorilla Glue. So that, there's a couple of glues in here, but it's all the same stuff. If it's wood glue, it'll glue wood. So Dave, you would prefer a wood glue over like a super glue? Absolutely. Super glue dries pretty brittle. I've had a lot of bad experiences with super glue over the years. We had a we had a project we did many years ago. It was uh, CCA Saloon. And when we were putting that together, Claude Bolton told us that uh, he had heard about an idea that he thought would work really good. And that would be to use some super glue and just put a spot of super glue in the middle of whatever we were gluing. And then that would dry quick and hold it. And then we put a ring around that of regular wood glue, which was supposedly a little more durable. And, uh, and so we tried it and half the stuff we glued into that saloon broke off or popped off or came off. And, and maybe it was because of the super glue. Maybe it was because we used two different kinds of glue. Uh, I couldn't tell you, but it didn't, it wasn't real successful. I just, I have a tendency to, if I don't have anything financially invested in something, I'll probably just, if it doesn't work, I just toss it aside and go with something I know does work. Life's too short to screw around with stuff that's not going to help you out. Hey, Dave, on that glue thing, if I were, I would avoid polyurethane glue. That's technically a wood glue also. Just stick with a yellow or a white glue and it'll work. Otherwise, you're going to get foaming up out of the joint. Uh, Everybody calls that Gorilla Glue, and it's it's really called polyurethane glue. So when you use Gorilla Glue, it can be mistaken for something that's not really. Gorilla makes both. So is what I've got here? Oh, it's yeah, gorilla. it's it's a yellow glue. Okay, this is gorilla wood glue, is what it says on the yeah. bottle. Polyurethane's listed as a wood glue, also, but it's that stuff that foams up, and oh. that, that would make a mess. I got this bottle at Walmart. Yep, just go with a yellow or a white glue, and everybody will be fine. Just said wood glue, so that's what I went with. Yep. Um, I'm I'm kind of doing two things at once here and I got to make sure I don't uh, I don't get too carried away in my, in a hurry that I don't tell you what I'm doing so I'm I'm just basically shaping these feet to the pattern that I drew on there the foot is wider at the ball of the foot right where the toes join the foot it's uh, almost no, not twice as wide, but it's a lot wider there than it is back toward the heel. So the heel of the foot is narrower. All you got to do is take your shoe off and look at the bottom of your to see what shape your foot is. Um, then I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to divide the foot into thirds. It's right up here on the top of the foot, inside third, outside third. And then to give that foot balance and shape, um, the thickest part of the foot, top to bottom, is right here, this inside third. So everything I do is as I'm cutting angles on here, I want to leave that inside third the thickest part of the foot. Hey, Dave, this is Buddy Eads. I have a question for you. When you're approaching your carving, do you generally start with feet or is there a particular process of where you start on a carving to begin with? Um, no, I just I just look it around and say, I need to take this off here and that looks like it's easy to get to. So I'm going to do that first. It doesn't have, have to be anything in particular. I generally get things blocked in, um, get most of the excess wood off before I 
start putting any detail into it. Thanks. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't have any any particular thing in mind as I'm getting started. Um, I usually start off thinking one thing and end up carving something that's different than what I started with. I'm not very, uh, my mind is not very organized when I'm going about these things. Uh, my wife can tell you how unorganized I am. To the point where it, it worried her enough that she took me to see a doctor. She thought there might be something wrong with me and the doctor just told her he said no he just got ADD and we got really good medications that'll help him out they've been been out for a, a number of years so there's they're safe and and they do a good job the only problem is you need to know that if I put him on something like Ritalin to take care of that it's gonna screw up his creativity because that's part of what it blocks in the brain. And so she decided that uh, she just have to live with what I, whatever it is I've got. All right, I'm just getting some of these corners off, trying to get things down. So that you can see where we're going. It, in some respects, it almost looks like a like a flat plane carving. After I get things kind of blocked in before I start messing with the details. All right, so I've got that arm tapered from the elbow to the shoulder, like you see over here. This one's tapered in toward the hand. So we've got to get this one tapered down. And then this hand is coming into the pocket. Actually, it's not really his pocket. He's wearing overalls. Um, and I don't know why it is, but guys that wear overalls tend to just kind of put their hand in their pants behind the bib. Um, I don't know what's going on when they do that, and I don't want to know. Um, but he just kind of kind of tucks the hand down into the bib of his pants there. And they can leave the button undone. It makes it easier to get their hand in and out of there. Um, okay, so we've got, we got a little bit of that blocked in some of this crap out of the way. Dave, I just do the thumbs, not the whole hand. Just the thumbs go in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I I wasn't uh I wasn't speaking of anyone in particular. Just just a, a general statement. <laughs> the whole neighborhood knows me as a guy on the corner that wears overalls, so I'm I'm qualified okay. to talk about him. So you're the guy with his hand in his pants. Just the thumbs. Just the thumb, just the thumb, okay. And and who, who, who are we speaking to? Ray. Who, who's this, who's talking with the overalls? Ray. Right. You made fun of my hat when I did the uh, hollow Santa, the spiral Santa. Oh, okay, I know who you are now. Yeah, all right. Yeah, well, that's me. I'm just a just a make fun guy because I'm a fun guy. All, All right. right, I grew up with two older brothers. I can take it. <laughs> All right, so I've got the profile already established on this thing, and then what I do is I don't have one of those fancy Pegasus saws, so uh, it's just a quarter inch skip tooth, but it goes in here, and I just nibble. So I go in and nibble till I get you know around these because I can't cut 
anything that sharp. Um, I'm going to take a V tool now and I'm going to go right down the front edge of his ear from the top of his ear straight on down. And that the where where I locate that ear, just uh, an FYI, since I've already done it, um, a line center line straight down the middle of his head and a line coming back from his eye. We we'll just call that his eye line. All right. And then we'll come uh, bring a line back from his nose. And the top of his ear is going to be just above that eye line. Think of a rectangle with the corners knocked off. Then this back half of the ear angles forward. And the earlobe is down here about even with the bottom edge of his nose. More or less. All right, so I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to outline these ears. So I went down there, a nice, heavy cut with a V-tool down the front edge of his ear. I'm going to angle the V-tool away from his ear so I get a nice vertical edge at the top edge of the ear. Come down the back of his ear and an angle forward. And then set the bottom edge. All right, do the same thing on both ears. Dave, yes. I made a rough house and I was wondering how wide your head is. Um, okay, I split the carving in half. I did a center line down the, down the carving. Yep. All right, whoops. And then I did it in quarters. Each half I split in half. That gave me the arms. That's also the width of the head. Okay, that's okay. That's I'll width. have to narrow mine down. <laughs> that's the width of the head, including the ears. So the head's actually going to be narrower than that, but it's yep. longer from front to back than it is from side to side by quite a bit. Thank you. All right. So once I get that set, I'm going to lay out where his hair is going to be. And I'm going to put a little dip in the back. And it's going to come up from his, just a, just in front of the top edge of his ear. He's not going to have long sideburns. Give him a little bit of hair on the side and let that sweep around. So I'm going to go around that with my feet. Man, before I do that, I'm going to knock the corners off the back of his hair. He's got he's got a little bit longer hair, so it's got a little flip to it back here. All right, now I'm going to go around this with a V tool. I'm going to drop it down a little bit in the back. I don't want that straight across back here. Dave, about how big is that V-tool that you're using? Quarter inch. This one is. Thank you. It's a dabs at Forge. It's just pretty much been my go-to for the past 20 years. Actually, it's been more than 20 years. See, when I, when I met Michelle, she had better tools than I did. She was a tool dealer from California, and she, she knew Scott Meyer, who makes, made the Diabs and Forge tools, which were the best you could get. I think they still are. I haven't seen anybody come up with anything better yet. Anyway, uh, that's what attracted me to her. So we ended up, uh, we ended up getting married, but. We put up with each other for eight years before we decided to get married. So make sure we could get along. All right, so I've got the ear and the hair established and I'm taking some of that head in a little bit up on top. 
And I'm going to pull off maybe a sixteenth of an inch on the side of his head. Not quite as far as that V cup went there. Let's keep my knife in front, in front of his hair and his sideburns. So now his head's starting to thin down a little bit. I'm going to uh, reestablish that eye line and the nose line because we're going to need them again. All right, I'm going to knock the corners off. The, I'm going to leave the nose the very end of it. I want to make it about as wide as it is tall. So if you look at the profile, the, the height of the tip of the nose is about how wide I want to leave it. I'm going to take corners off about at about 45. And you don't want to go in there and just knock everything off in a hurry. Or you end up, we'll end up talking about glue again. All right, so I got some pretty good angles on his face here. I want to take this corner off along the nose right here, going back up toward the brow. And we're sort of blocking everything in. All right, I'm going to shape his head a little bit. Just halfway between the bottom of his nose and his eye line is his cheekbone. So I'm going to taper that head in from the cheekbone up. I'm going to take that gouge that I was using before. Keep the edge of it right on the cheekbone. So I leave that cheekbone protruding. Go straight back toward his hairline and his ear. Then I'm going to go right up the front edge of his sideburn with this gouge. That's going to leave his brow protruding. Dave, is that the V tool you're still using or a gouge? gouge that I was roughing out with. The number nine. Yeah. So if, we look at, so if we look at it from the top, whoops, get it back in line here. So if we look at it from the top, I've got that gouge going in on either side, right behind the brow. I don't know if my center line was not in the center or I've cut more off of one side than I did the other. I want to even it up a little bit. So I'm kind of watching for symmetry, at least at this stage of the game. If we want to get asymmetrical, let, there'll come a time for that. I'll round off the top of his head a little bit. We don't have any hair to deal with up here. Just keeping his head smooth. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna make sure we get his head done. I want to take the front edge of his ear. I'm gonna leave the top and back of his ear, so I'm gonna make a wedge out of that block for his ear. All right, I've got another gouge here somewhere. This is a five millimeter veiner, which kind of fits right there where his neck is. So right at the bottom edge of his ear, 
I'm going to drive that in. I'll keep this handy because I'm going to use it again here in a minute. All right, I need to set his nasal labial fold and the back of his nostril. So coming in behind his nostril here, angling down. So I'm staying just above the profile that I cut out. I'm gonna let that curve up slightly so he helps him smile a little. All right, so I just I'm going to start this with a knife. This is a pretty small head. I mean, it's fairly much bigger than my thumb. Uh, make a little angle under the nose right here, off of each corner, straight back. All right, now I'm going to set up his eyes. So I'm looking at the entire width of his head. Um, it's not a five eyes wide as the entire width of his head. I'm looking at the width of his face. And if my center line's in the right place, I want to back off from the center line a little bit, stick the point of my knife in and drive it in, making a cut going at an upward angle right off the eye line. And the eye line is right there at the deepest point. I'm gonna make another cut straight in, coming down. In this case, I'm coming down at about a 45. I wanna match those cuts on the other side. And I've gone in there pretty, pretty stuck it in there pretty good. All right, so I got those two cuts in on either side. I'm just gonna go in and pop a chip out. Chip carvers would probably be pretty good at this. Hey Dave, what's yes. the... this is Tom. I can tell, how are you doing Tom? I'm, I'm good, we've had snow again today. And it's been overcast, but That's, you, you know what it's like here. It's always overcast. It is. Hey, I'm wondering, I'm looking at my crooked band. And when we did this thing, that in those night, in night classes. You were in that class. Yeah, I was. Ah. My, my little guy has got these little gap, um, divots on the side of his nose. This was the pattern we used for that. This was the guy we did in that night class. I've been wanting that too. <laughs> this thing was, I found it in a box outside that was out in the weather. So, yeah. Left over. Now I'm just, I'm just recycling. So it's that little left uh, divot that, that, that you told us to put alongside the node. But maybe this doesn't go in there anymore. I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I really don't remember a lot of details from that night. You know what year that was? Um, I'll ask Jerry. It was the um, because there were a couple of years that you that I went to the dome. It was, and. 
and it I think it was the first year that, that I sat there um, and in the evening with you. So I I'll have to look. I I don't know, but it was shortly after that I decided not to go there anymore. So yeah, I think that's right. That wasn't your fault. I just well I, here I all these years I thought it was. <laughs> uh, if you think that, that's okay. All right, I need to. Uh, I need to start uh, thinking about the area under the nose, right in here. I, I've got his eyes kind of blocked in. You can see there's one, two, three, three double cuts on each eye. The eye itself is going to be nothing more than a shadow or a slit going across here. And then out here, the fold of his eye, which is an extension of that upper eyelid. Dave, can we see a close-up of that when you finish up? Is that now? Yeah. I need to get a bag under the eye. And the bag's coming off of this first the, that double cut that I made to start the eye. I got a lot of knife blade here, but I'm only using the tip right now. This knife here, Cameron Cordell made this knife and it's, it's really been nice. Been using it for about a year now. It's really holding an edge and Doesn't have a fancy handle, but handles don't cut the wood too well. I just want a handle that feels good in my hand. And I like a, a longer handle. A lot of people you like those little short stubby handles, but if I can't get my little finger onto the handle, that's I pivot between my index finger and thumb with my little finger. And I need that leverage back there in order to get a good forceful cut. But if you're happy with what you've got, then you carve with what you've got. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much the cuts that I'm gonna put in the eye. I need to come down here and set this corner of his mouth right there, the nasal labial fold coming in and push the corner of this nose straight back and take a little three cornered chip out of there. Would that be considered your five cut eye? Uh, yeah, I guess you could call it that. So right in here where I went in with my knife and made that little curve at the end of the nasal labial fold, I'm gonna come in with a gouge. I'm gonna drive it in toward the opening of the mouth. And everything under the nose right here, you wanna start thinking, everything was squared off, start thinking in terms of a barrel curving that around. I'm just going to take the tip of my knife right up here in the corner. Make a little deeper shadow.
Now I want to get, I'm going to get rid of this line that I've got on here. Uh, I should probably do the other side before I get too carried away. Corner that nose out of there. Probably ought to finish up this other eye too. Anytime you're doing something small like this, you need to be kind of careful how far you penetrate with your knife blade because the thickness of that blade requires the wood fibers to separate in order to make room for that blade going in. And when that happens, you get these little cracks and chips and you'd be going along just fine. Then all of a sudden you have something just kind of fall off because it was cracked and that's what happened right, right back here, but that's not gonna hurt him any. So we're okay with that. Um, around the nose off, which is gonna get rid of this ink on here. I'm gonna separate the brows a little bit. Round over to his little lip here. Get that little corner up in here. All right, now um, I'm just gonna do this with a pencil because it's not all gonna come off. Coming from the corner of the eye here, dropping down and staying right behind his nasal labia fold or his smile line. I'm going to let this line come down and drop all the way down to his jaw line. So if he has jowls, they're going to be sitting, these little pouches are going to build up right here on the jaw line. And so this line now is going to swing around and come back up to the corner of the mouth. And that's, that's going to create the jowl on this side. So just behind that smile line, drop down to his jaw line, and then swing back up to the corner of his mouth. Now, the corner of his mouth is not going to be on that smile line. It's not going to go back that far. And because he is toothless, he's not going to have a lot of He's not going to have anything behind his upper lip that's pushing that lip out. Right? Could you bring up bring that up closer? Yeah, does that help? Yes. Thank so, you. So we want to get in here and, and set the corner of his mouth. Just driving the tip of my knife in. I'm going to take a little three-corner chip out right there. And this line right here is the, the important one because it you want that little corner to point right up into that little shadow you created up there. So I set the corner of his mouth back there. Get the same thing over here.
If you do a couple hundred of these, they go pretty, pretty easy for you. And do you have to do a couple hundred? Oh, hell, I don't know. I did. <laughs> it's, it was required of me. That's how long it took me to figure it out. All right, so this, this little fold in his cheek right here, I'm going to just set with my knife. And I'm, I strop my knife really good while you guys are all signing on. Because if your knife's not sharp, you're not going to be able to do this without putting too much pressure on it to Sorry. Hey, Dave. Yes, sir. Why are you uh, not using a V uh, a V tool to do that part there? Um, because I have to put my knife down and look for my V tool. <laughs> the only reason. Um, plus, if I do it with the V tool, it's going to give me a a real consistent line and i like the fact that that when i get done with this it might be a little deeper in one area and and not as deep in another um let me get the other side going here too and if your v tool is not really really sharp It's gonna it's gonna break the wood fiber instead of giving you a nice clean cut. Thanks. And this comes right up into the corner of the mouth here. Now, right below the cheekbone, remember where that was is, if you, you have to imagine where the nose line is, but right, that cheekbone is the zygomatic arch that comes all the way back to the ear. But right below that, I can come in behind his jowls, all this flesh that's built up here, and I can create a little shadow in here. That face kind of sinks in a little bit right under his cheekbone. We'll do the same thing over here. Now over here, I still got the pen mark on there so you can see where that bottom of that cheekbone is. So we're almost done with his face. I wanna round off this area under his nose a little more. And everything under his nose is just kind of sinking back in because there's no teeth in there. Get a nice line in here with the tip of my knife. This is an area where I don't want to I need to have a really good edge on my knife so I don't have to put too much pressure on it. Because I don't want it jumping out of the wood and stopping on my finger. So that, now we can open up his nose so we can breathe. 
Again, I'm just using the tip of my knife. I just broke part of his cheek off. So I'm gonna set that aside so I don't lose it. Get the rest of his nose here. Um, here's V tool. We'll go ahead and start setting his eyebrows with this V tool here. They're going up and away from center at the start. And then I'm going to splay them out so that they're So on these on these eyebrows, because they're they're really big, they can almost start looking like butterflies coming off his forehead. Um, we getting any chat about who wants this thing? Yeah, Dave, we've had a lot of chat on that. Oh, okay. A lot of humble people that say they're not deserving of it, but would love to have it. Um, Is there any, any clever responses? Uh, I can't interpret some if being a clever for its true stories um so <laughs> are you somebody lying no i don't think lying i just think uh, you know uh, it, they're good stories all right since i've got to have this uh, i've got a couple pieces to glue here so i'm going to get this real quick All right, so and Dave, we're sitting. Dave, when you post hours. that uh, drawing again, somebody asked for. Could you uh, give us a back view picture? A back view picture, straight on back. Oh, okay. a picture. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the yeah. new one you added this last couple of days. That colored one really helped me figure out what I was doing. Thank you. So you've already started carbon one. Yeah, but it's like I said, it's wider. I can, you wouldn't be able to see it. You're, you're carving, so. No, that's okay. Um, let's see. I can get this back in the same place. And Dave, so you know we're sitting right at an hour. Just keep you in there, so you know. Oh, okay. That's not working. Break off a chip and then try to figure out how it goes back on. Oh, uh, there it goes. Okay. I, for one, really love this format of watching Dave carve with his camera like that. It, it, it really um, it makes a difference. See, at one point I thought when I broke this, uh, no, I'll just pretend like that didn't happen and just throw it down there with the rest of the chips. But if you can save a chip that breaks off and get it back on, 
That's a big chip. Well, it, it's kind of important because I. There. And Tom, I told Dave, I thought his camera looked a lot clearer than it does when uh, we have the classes today. So I don't know if his internet's really good today or what, but it look, looks good. No, I, I, I think the, like, the table is if it hits both corners it, and he starts carving, it's not too far away. So I think that the distance has something to do with it. It could be. And if, for right. those of you that are not taking a day, any of Dave's classes, this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what you see. Uh, and the great thing about taking classes, you get to go back and rewatch it over and over and over. I mean, yes, we're going to put this out on YouTube, uh, but you'll be able to watch, you know, his classes over and over for um, the couple, the three to five weeks of the class, three weeks of the class, and then two weeks after the class, you still have the recordings. All right. So I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and take the V tool, drive it a little deeper inside the elbow here, between his torso and his. And when we split the arm from the body, it only goes to the armpit, and that's halfway between the elbow and the shoulder. So I've seen some carvings posted about that people do, and they, they end up splitting the arm all the way up into the shoulder. So on the back side, I'm gonna let this, and I still got, I'm trying to avoid that piece I just glued on. But on the back side here, if I didn't have you all watching, it'd be a good time to go in and get lunch. All right, so his overalls comes down off from his shoulder here, right here where the head and the shoulder come together, both sides. And there are different kinds of overalls. Some of them have a little, a little triangular tag right back here. up over his shoulder, and then comes down to the front. And I just kind of go in with a small V-tool and outline his pants. The bib on his overalls comes right up to the chest here. And there's a little button. It's actually a little metal hook thing. So if you wear overalls, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you have to go get you a pair. And then that swings all the way down, kind of low on the side, where it comes around and meets from the other side. For a guy that don't wear overalls, Dave, you know an awful lot about them. I had buy a pair. I could have picked a pair. I got about nine. Yeah, no, I went out and bought a pair of overalls and uh, put them on a coat hanger and hung them here in my shop so I had something to reference. Um, anyway, you can go in and, and outline the clothes like with a knife like I'm doing here. Or you might find it easier to come in with a small V tool, like I'm doing here. A lot of times if I do it with a V tool, I come back and redo it with a knife. Oops. The part I glued in, I just glued to my finger and pulled it off. We gotta do that again. Where do you get those little paddles like that, Dave? Those little paddles. Ice cream. 
Uh -huh. So they they start out like this. Ice cream bars from Costco. I remember that. All right, so. Um, let's see, fingers on this hand here, I'm going to do paper the hand. Think in terms of the thirds that I did with the foot, almost the same thing with the back of the hand that's bent here. Um, and so you just split it right down the middle and then you split each half. And I'll use a V tool. So Dave, you want to you want to give me an idea of what kind of uh, responses we get for who gets this? Well, we've had some great responses coming through. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll finish this up. Okay. Everybody gets. Um, a lot of people don't think I deserve the carving, but it's really cool uh, to uh, have Dave's carving. One person said they've got a. Dwayne Gosnell carving, cowboy carving. Love to put it up beside it. Um, let's see. Look back through some others here. I want to sit next to a Gosnell piece. So <laughs> that one. Yeah. Um, person's dads can't comb their eyebrows because they're really uh, thick. Um, Santa would really appreciate having a Dave carving. Uh, would make sure. I don't know Santa. Well, oh, would make sure that. Uh, they would have a good Santa would have a good Christmas. Um, somebody needs to have the carving so they can prove that um, the name Stetson um, pronounced the same is far more than amazing bunch of cowboy hats. Uh, instead of Dave, I, I, instead of Dave coming to my house to uh, hold my business cards, he can send them, uh, send that little wood handyman uh, to my door. My coworkers would enjoy it. Um, another, uh, let's see, where's that one? Now one, one individual said that they, uh, I think it was Dana, um, and Dana, forgive me for butchering her last name. I never can pronounce it. Um, she was saying that she was trying to. Kabagic. Kabagic, Kabagic, yeah. I deserve Dave's carving because as a new, as a new carver and a subscriber to the Wood Carving Academy, uh, his site techniques, um, that's actually Steve Lawson's uh, teaching, have proven proven uh, to best suit me. Uh, and Stetson's, Mr. Stetson would motivate and encourage me. And then we get to where Dana's was here, because I kind of like, I kind of liked it. Was, she was at the CCA event this last year, and she was trying to, um, trying to to win the sound oh, collection on your remember. carving and she lost it in the last second i remember talking to her yeah but yeah she said she was trying to trying to uh win the one at the cca and somebody came in and swooped it under for the last minute said all right here it is well this little lady lost out um at the last second on the silent auction for your carvings at last year's carving the rockies i couldn't make it this year i can't make it this year but I'm still uh, obsessed with getting uh, with getting one of your carvings to learn from. Let's see. No, another not not knowing about being worthy. Um, we have a lot of people that aren't worthy. I think all of us aren't worthy. Um, I don't wanna, that's that's not a very positive. But I'll be honest, um, Dave. I, I after reading through all the comments and going from what we'd said earlier um, about looking for someone who's supporting the CCA and the Carving the Rockies and supporting what's going on. I actually, um, I just messaged Dana a few minutes ago and I, I pronounced her the winner because I didn't know if I'd, you and I'd get to chat about it beforehand. So I, I hope you didn't mind me doing that, but I thought for a good cause and what she did um, and wanting to 
to sponsor stay on. support CCA. All right. I should need to stay on for a minute when we get done so I can get an address. Okay, we'll do that. And for all of you that uh, put your comments in the chat, man, they're gr great stuff going through there. Um, but I hope you, I hope you understand. Don't get too mad at me. Um, you know, I always make somebody mad, so I apologize if I do. <laughs> well, when you give something away, you you end up making one person happy, but then you piss off everybody else. So, so I make uh, sure I'm the one pissing people off, and not you, Dave. So we're good. <laughs> well, that's all right. I've pissed people off for a lot of years now. <laughs> It's uh, people aren't pissed off when I get done talking to them. They weren't paying attention. Or well, they had no sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I was sitting, I was sitting last night flipping through Facebook and somebody made a comment and I thought, oh man, I got I got a comment on that. And I I typed it out and then I deleted it before <laughs> before I posted it. I've been doing a lot of deleting lately. Discretion is the better part of valor. Uh, I like that. See, that would be a good uh, a good sign signage thing. Um, yeah. So, did was were any of the responses uh, from anybody thinking they were going to donate to the coffee fund for the? And um, no, um, Dana's was the closest to a, a donation wise, even though she was trying to um, go for the uh, silent auction. You better, you better check them again there, Dave L. Okay, well, maybe I missed one. Which one did I miss? <clears throat> Contribution. Oh. On it. Sounds like Myron. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, did I mess up? I'm, I apologize then, Myron, if I missed you out. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Sounds like a sore loser. <laughs> nah. No, Myron well enough. Myron's never a sore loser. That's Come one on, you can't quite card. low. <laughs> anyway is this uh hopefully we've given you enough to go on Let me get some folds in his pants here and the shoes and on his pant legs we can his pants are too long we can Create some folds down here. Start tight at the edge, and then open up a little as they go up. Hey Dave, I think the crooked man was was twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. So that was uh, eight years ago. Yep. Hmm. all right well dave's finishing up the uh, last little bits of the folds and everything um i'll let him let y'all continue watching that but i'll let you guys know of our uh presenters that are coming up here in the uh, near future uh next week we're gonna have van kelly um if you don't know van van has a, a youtube channel that you can check out and he'll be joining us next week um on the uh, following week of that, which is April 15th, Matt Atland of, um, of Deep Holler Knives is going to be with us. Then the following week after that, we're going to have Ryan Green. And then on the 29th of April, Richard Holden is going to join us again and, uh, and do a little presentation for us. Um, so we'll have all that stuff coming up for you guys in the near future. Uh, Dave, uh, if you want to give a, a once around on your carving, and we'll all take a good peek and look at everything, and then we'll uh, do a few things and be done. It's a good idea. Ooh, I didn't round his chin off. <laughs> he had a uh, wart growing on that part of the chin. 
So I find all kinds of things I didn't do as I'm turning around, but. Excuse me, Dave, did that blank start out at two inches wide also? Two by two. Two by two. Okay, thank you. Bottom one right there. Here, this is the one that's got the legs the same length. I've got all his hair to do. Outline his clothes. So I was going to do one, uh, one just wearing regular pants and a and a you know a short sleeve t shirt or something, and then I thought about doing one without his clothes, and then I thought no, I could, I could do, I could have one barefoot wearing tidy whiteies or something. Um, and just a t uh, sleeveless T-shirt. Thanks for doing that, Dave. I just noticed that on the right arm, you've got that elbow out open too. So appreciate that. Yeah, I, I did. Um, not for any particular reason, but they don't have to be. Well, you know, Dave, if anybody needs pictures of bibs, they can just look up any Vic Hood picture and find them in any color. <laughs> He said he had a tuxedo pair he wore to the White House. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Vic, uh, Vic has some strange outfits. Vic is not Vic is not a strange guy, but um, I've known I've known Vic for quite a while. All right. Well, with Dave uh, finished all that great stuff up, guys, we he's done a wonderful job for us today. So I'm going to go ahead and. Yeah, I'm going to finish this up after you're all gone. You know what, Dave? I'm going to finish this up after you're all gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And because um, he didn't get to do it, well, he did do it during the International Association of Wood Carvers. Because I know Dave usually carves the entire time that he's watching and enjoying this. Uh, guys, I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, Blake will be back with us next week. Um, and we look forward to having you guys here. Van Kelly will be presenting for us. Uh, know that um, we are we do have these videos that will be back out on YouTube um, and Blake should be able to get it out there tomorrow or the next day uh, just depending on when he gets back from uh, his college visit with his daughter and uh, we just I'm thankful for that because uh, you know I can't do this too many weeks in a row uh, I do appreciate you guys and I thank Dave a lot for joining us you guys have a wonderful Saturday and thank you so much for joining us on the International Association of Woodcarvers Hey, we might Thank have you. to tell Blake uh, you're taking over. I uh, know, don't hey, you? Do that? Yeah, I think that I think we ought to have a vote on this. I think maybe Blake's out of here. Uh, no, we're done. No.